I'm Karen Nelson, and you're listening to Becoming You Again, episode number 100. Welcome to Becoming You Again, the podcast to help with your mental and emotional well-being during and after divorce. This is where you learn to overcome the trauma of your divorce by reconnecting with yourself, creating lasting emotional resilience, and living a truly independent life so your life will be even better than when you were married. I'm your host, Karen Nelson. We made it. We made it to 100. I am so happy that you're here listening today. I am so grateful to every single one of you who has showed up and continues to listen to this podcast. And I have to say, I am so excited and proud of myself for making it here. It's been just about a year since we started this podcast. And how exciting that we made it to episode 100. And as you know, if you've been listening, I asked for you to send in questions and we're just going to get a little bit more personal. Now, obviously, I'm just the one answering the questions today, but if there's any question that you hear that you want to tell me your answer to, I would love to hear. Come and DM me on Instagram at Karen Nelson Coaching and answer the questions for yourself and tell me so that we can get to know each other a little bit better. And thank you again for sending in your questions. I was hoping that this would be kind of a more fun episode, and there are definitely some fun questions in here. And so I I really appreciate every person who sent in a question. You are amazing. Thank you for contributing to this episode. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm just going to read the question and then give my answer. I haven't really prepared much for these. I've read through them once. And we will just kind of see how this goes. All right, question number one. You've mentioned your partner on the podcast before, and it seems like you two are really happy together. How did you two meet? Did you find it hard to trust again after such a long marriage? Okay, so first question, how did we meet? Uh, We met on OkCupid, which is a dating app, or I think it's still a dating app. I'm not sure. We met It's been like, oh gosh, I was trying to figure out how long we've been together. Six and a half years now, maybe? Could be seven and a half. Oh gosh, I should probably know that. (laughs) But either way, when we started dating, we met on OkCupid and it was just the dating app that I was on. I was didn't try out any others. It worked for us. And I talked to lots of different guys on there, messaged many, many people through it. And Tim was one of the people who messaged me and we just kind of hit it off right away. And that's kind of how things went. As to your second part of the question, did you find it hard to trust again after such a long time being married? A little bit. I mean, I hadn't dated anyone in 20 years. And so that was definitely scary. And I mostly, I think I've talked about this before, I probably wasn't quite ready to get into dating. I wasn't really doing it for the right reasons. What I really wanted was somebody to validate me and make me feel good and make me happy. I hadn't really learned at that point yet that that's really my job and it's not really up to someone else to be able to do that for me or to even do that for me, not be able to, to just even do it. And so I got lucky and found Tim who is so kind and so open and loving and very eager to hear my opinion on things and wants to know my opinion and is open, even if it's different than his. And I really, I really needed that, but also it's taught me such a valuable lesson in valuing my own opinion and letting it be worthwhile, knowing that it's valid and that I am worthy and valuable no matter what I think and no matter what he thinks. I think because he is who he is, he made it very easy for me to trust him. And I have been able to really deepen that trust in him and the trust in myself. So yes, getting on the dating website and talking to guys and texting and meeting up and going on dates, for sure there was some fear there and it was a little scary. But once I met Tim, I started to learn so much about myself and he is just such a great guy that he made it very, very easy for me to learn to trust again. All right, next question. What is your favorite movie or TV show? Uh, I love the movie Love Actually. I watch it every year at Christmas, sometimes during the year also, but mostly just at Christmas. I know so many of the lines. I have loved it from the moment that it was released. And I know it's very silly and I know it's cheesy and I know it's lovely and I love the stories and I always will. So that is definitely my favorite movie. But I I love to watch all kinds of movies. 
we watch movies often, we watch television shows often, and one of my favorite TV shows is Severance. If you have not watched it, it is on Apple Plus, and it is so amazing. The acting is incredible, the storytelling is enthralling and fascinating and keeps you on the edge of your seat and exciting and that is probably, I would say, one of my favorite shows. Next question. I remember you said once you went to Alaska. What was that like and where is your favorite place you've traveled? Yes, I have been to Alaska twice. My sister lives in Alaska and her family and the last time I went was last summer. My nephew was getting married and so the kids and I went up for his wedding. I've only been to Alaska in the summer and I probably will only go to Alaska in the summer. It is incredibly beautiful in the summer. It is one of the most beautiful places that I have ever been. It is so green. The hiking is incredible. The sky, I mean, it's just like mountain and ocean and open and it's so just like, it's beautiful. If you ever have the opportunity to go to Alaska, 100% take it. What is the most memorable place I've ever been? That's a good question. I don't travel as much as I would like to. And there are lots of places I would love to go. I've been to some really fun, amazing places in the United States. I can't say that I have one that's like the most memorable because I always try and make them fun no matter what it is. I love New York City. I love Virginia, D.C. area. That is such a great place. We went to Portland and the Pacific Northwest a couple of years ago with the kids and it was so beautiful. Gosh, Disneyland, I love. And overseas, I've been to Europe once. I went to Spain and France and England when I was a teenager with my family and I'm dying to go back. My kids have been back a couple of times and I haven't been back since, but I guess that would probably be one of my most memorable trips just because as a family, we had such an amazing time and it was so new and different from anything that I had ever experienced and I loved every second of it. So probably that, but I really do like to travel. I just don't do it as often as I would like. And I'm hoping in the next few years, now that my kids are moving off to college, my son is graduating from high school this year and Tim's kids are getting older that hopefully we'll be able to do a little bit more of the traveling coming up in the future. All right, next question. You give recommendations for self-help books on the podcast, but do you like to read other kinds of books? If so, what are some of your favorites? Yes, I do like to read other kinds of books. I will read all different kinds of books, but my very, very, very most favorite are mysteries. I just love mysteries. I, this is maybe going to sound silly and it's okay. You can totally think that I'm silly. Um, I like to think that I am an amazing detective in my brain. And I think that when I read detective novels, I'm, I'm actually pretty good about figuring out who the murderer is before the end of the book, like before they actually get to the part where they tell you who the murderer is. And it's rare. Like, Every once in a while, there will be a book that will trick me or that I just I just cannot figure it out. Most of the time, I can figure it out, and I actually like it when I can. It's a little frustrating to me when I can't, and probably that's the goal of most writers is to, like, not have you figure out who it is. I don't know what their, what their intention is when they're writing, but I do love a good mystery, and I can't say that I have a favorite but I do have authors that I really love. I love Michael Connolly. Lately, I've been into this author named Dervla McTiernan. She is an Irish author, and she writes about the murder squad, different detectives who are kind of in charge of the investigations, which I love. And so, yeah, I would say anything mystery would be my top number one favorite kind of book that is a novel. And I really am, have been really into over the last probably two years into Dervla McTiernan. All right, next question. Did I go to college? Yes, I did go to college, actually. I went to Brigham Young University years ago, years and years and years ago. I went, so I graduated from high school. I took a couple of years off. I mean, I got married when I was 19, so we took a few years off. We uh, both worked and then we both decided to go back to school part-time and work part-time. And so I graduated from college when I was a little bit older. I think I was like 20, 
ooh, Robin was two, so I must have been about 26 because I had her when I was 24. That sounds about right. I think that math sort of works out in there somewhere. But yes, I graduated from Brigham Young University with a degree in history, and I have never used it once. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, next question. What's your favorite dessert or indulgent treat? Hmm, okay. Well, I don't know that I have a favorite because I just really, really love sweet things. I really love sweet almost anything. Anything with chocolate, anything like cake. There is a bakery in our town that's like a local grocery store, but they have an amazing bakery. And I love their donuts. Their donuts are literally the most delicious thing. And I will go down there probably much more often than I should be going down there, but I enjoy it. And I go down at least once a week and get a donut from this delicious donut shop. And I'm not the only person who loves this place. I'm telling you, like if you go on a Saturday morning, there's like a line to the front entrance of the store because everybody wants their donuts. And they just remodeled their bakery part and put in more donut display and add even more donuts because they're so popular. They are so good. So I guess right now you could say it's a donut, but I just really love anything sweet. I am not picky when it comes to the sweets. Let's be real. Okay, next question. Are you a cat or a dog person? I mean, if you've listened to any of my podcasts or if you follow me on Instagram, it's probably pretty clear that I am a cat person. I love cats so, so much. It does not mean that I don't love the puppies. I do love puppies. I love dogs so much. They are the sweetest, happiest, best little companions. They are so cute and I do love them, but cats are like, they're like my people. I just love everything about them. I love the purring and the snuggles and the brattiness and they're just adorable and soft and I call them my babies and they are so sweet and sometimes they're naughty and I love them anyway. So I'm definitely a cat person. Okay, next question. How did you find the lawyer that was the right fit for you during your divorce? I think this is an interesting question because mine was my situation was a little bit different than probably most of you who are listening to this podcast. My ex and I, when I asked him for the divorce and we kind of decided that's what we were going to do, we just really, everything was really amicable between both of us. And we decided that we were just going to split everything 50-50. I mean, literally everything, all of the kids' expenses, all of our finances, all of the debt. I got the house, he got the investments. Like we just split it all 50-50. And so we just needed a lawyer to kind of like draw it all up and make sure we had everything in there that we needed to be paying attention to. And my brother is a lawyer. And when I told him we were getting divorced, he was like, well, I'll just hook you up with one of the divorce lawyers in my office. And he did. And he was amazing. And the guy was very kind. And basically he just said that he was representing me and drew everything up and we just did it all through email and then we signed the papers and then he sent them to the court and it was signed by the judge. So for me, it was just not really an issue. I didn't have to do any kind of interviews like probably so many of you have to. And I was very lucky and I, I do recognize that I was very lucky and it was, I was very blessed to have a husband who was also kind of on the same page of let's make this as easy as possible. And it just kind of worked out that my brother was a lawyer and, you know, so I do recognize how lucky I am. And that's kind of how my story went. Pretty basic, I guess. Okay, next question. What do you do when you're not coaching or making your podcast? That is a good question. So lately, Every couple of weeks or so, my boyfriend and I have been going to a different local bar trying to find one that has a shuffleboard table. Have you guys played this game? It is so fun. We went on Christmas Day this last, this past Christmas. Neither of us had the kids. We did our Christmas the day before on Christmas Eve because we knew that we weren't having the kids this year on Christmas. And so it was just the two of us and we went to a bar that was open on Christmas, which there's not very many of those out there, especially in Northern Utah. There's not as many, right? And we found one and the one we went to had a shuffleboard table and neither of us had ever played and there wasn't much else to do. And so we decided let's play. And so we asked the bartender, she was very kind and she's like, oh, it's so fun. This is how you play. She kind of laid out the rules 
and we kind of went over and played and it was so much fun. And so we've just been kind of trying to find different local bars to try out, see who has the best table, see how they compare to our first experience. And we are having a lot of fun. And I can't say that I'm very good at it, but I don't even care. It is so much fun. That's kind of what I've been doing lately. Also something fun. Um, I mean, I love to do all of the normal things, right? Like I love to watch movies. We, we like to go out to go to movies. If it's warm around here, sometimes we'll go for a hike or I love to go for walks. I go for a walk literally every day that I can, that I can fit it into my day, even when it's freezing cold outside and it gets sometimes very cold in Utah. But um, so those are kind of like the normal things that I like to do, right? Lately, and this is something else that kind of started after Christmas, which is kind of funny. Like, I guess I decided to do some new things this year, <laughs> I suppose you could say that. But um, I've been teaching myself how to juggle, which is kind of fun. My boyfriend knows how to juggle and he wanted juggling balls for Christmas just so that he could practice and get a little bit better. And so, you know, I it's after Christmas and I keep seeing these juggling balls just sitting around on the table downstairs in our house. And I'm like, maybe I could learn to juggle. I mean, like, why not? Who cares, right? I'm 45. I can learn new things. And so he gave me some pointers and some tips on like, maybe, okay, this is what, how you should start and then move on to this and then move on to that. And so I just decided like, okay, I'm going to practice a few minutes every day. My minimum baseline was 10 minutes a day. And I've been doing that. And it's been really kind of fun to watch my progress. And I know that sounds like not very much time to put into something, but I promise you, I'm getting better and better every single day. And you can see it like it's a fun thing that you can actually watch your progress because you're catching it more. You're not dropping it as many times. My hand-eye coordination is getting better and it's just kind of fun. Didn't think I'd ever really even want to learn how to juggle, but here we are. I'm learning how to juggle, which is so hilarious to me. So there you go. Those are some things that I like to do when I'm not coaching or making the podcast. Okay, next question. What is your favorite album or song? All right. Well, again, if you listen to the podcast, I've probably mentioned this before, but I love, love, love Taylor Swift. I am not a huge music person. Like everyone else in my family loves music. They live and die by music, which I think is amazing and great. It's just not my thing that I like have to have is music. I do like it, but I don't have to have it. But if I'm going to listen to music, it's usually Taylor Swift. Now I will say when I was going through the beginning part of my divorce years ago, Taylor Swift's Red album. I think it had come out actually a few years before, but it was an album that my daughter was kind of into. And so I had bought the CD so that we could play it in my car when I would drive her to dance and to school and all of the things, right? And so it was always on. And as I got listening to the songs and they kind of are in my head and I'm listening and singing along and all the things, I realize that whole entire album is literally about breakup and getting back out there and finding love again. And it was just, it just hit home so much that that album resonates with me so, so much. And it holds such a special place in my heart. And then when she re-released it this last year and with new songs, and I just love every second of it. So that's probably one of my top albums, I would say, is the Red Taylor Swift album. Also Folklore of hers, which came out um, kind of during the year where everybody was locked down and stuck in their homes during COVID. That again also just meant it was something that I just absolutely needed in that moment, in that like season of my life. And it is such an important album to me. As far as songs... I mean, we'll just stick with the Taylor Swift theme here. My favorite Taylor Swift song is Lover. It is literally one of the best songs I've ever heard, and I love it so much. And so, yeah, we're just going to say Taylor Swift all the way around, best album and best song <laughs> for me. But again, if you guys want to answer these questions and tell me yours, I would love to hear. I am totally open to hearing, listening to new things that you love. I think that's such a great thing. So send your answers my way. Remember, you can DM me at Karen Nelson Coaching on Instagram. All right, next question. How did you know it was time for you to start dating again? Did you have any false starts where you got out there but then decided to wait a little bit longer? And lastly, 
Do you know of any helpful resources to support the possible decision to remain single rather than pursuing a new relationship? Okay, so again, this is kind of a three-part question, so we'll just start with the first. How did I know it was time to start dating again? I sort of answered this with the first one, but I'll just reiterate, I didn't. I... Again, I probably started way before I should have. I wasn't ready. I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I just wanted somebody to like me and to tell me that they liked me. And I was really looking and seeking for that validation. So I probably wasn't ready to start dating. I got lucky that I found somebody who's really amazing and kind of understood that he couldn't be that validation for me. I mean, of course, he tells me that I'm beautiful and that he loves me and all of those great things, but he was in a different place than I was. And so he recognized that, like, I don't want to be the person that you need this from. I want you to do that for yourself as well. And I needed somebody to teach me that and show me that, but also to be there to support me and love me in the way that I needed in that moment. And Tim definitely is that person. And I love that about him. So I started to date while we were still separated and... I don't know if that was the right time. I think for any individual, you kind of just have to play it by ear and do what feels right for you. Dip your toes in the water, and if it feels good and fun and you're enjoying it, then keep going. And if not, take a step back. You can always stop, right? There is no, even if you're in a relationship, you can always stop and say, I need to take a break. It's totally you're in control. And knowing that for yourself, I think, is a really important thing. Um, Second part of the question Did you have any false starts where you got out there but then decided to wait a little bit longer? Yes, I guess I would say a little bit. I sort of had this experience where I had just gotten on OkCupid. It was, again, it was literally the only dating app that I went on. And it was the first one that I went on. I just picked it randomly. I didn't know anything about dating apps at the time. And it was one of the first guys who kind of messaged me. We were, we had been messaging back and forth for a couple of days. And it kind of ended badly and weirdly. And I felt very embarrassed. And I actually felt really stupid. My, my self-esteem and my self-worth were so low at this time that anything anyone said to me that, like, didn't fit this narrative of, like, I need them to like me and think that I'm amazing right away hurt so bad and it was so crushing to me and so it kind of ended so weirdly in that way that I just like retreated from the app I think I deleted the app I didn't delete my profile I think I just deleted the app from my phone didn't go on for a couple of weeks and just really kind of you know, curled up in my blanket and woe is me. And I just felt so stupid in that moment that I did take a little bit of a break. And then after a couple of weeks, I came out of my shell again and went back on. And that's when I just was like, I'm just going to have fun and see what happens and talk to a lot of guys. And I'm not going to get like really attached to any one guy. Cause that's kind of what I had done is I had like talked to a couple of guys. And then this one guy gave me a little bit of attention. And then I was just like all in through the texting, right? We hadn't even met. I never even met this guy in real life. We just were texting back and forth. And so I just decided once I got back on that I was just going to make it more fun. It was going to be just a little bit lighter, not as heavy as I was making it. So I guess sort of that was a false start for me and then deciding I was ready to go back in. Uh, I don't know what that looks like for you, but again, I think it's just one of those things you have to feel out for yourself. Everybody's is going to be different. And as far as resources to support your decision whether or not to go, I do have a podcast episode that I would say will give you some good guidance on recognizing whether or not you're ready. I give some questions in that podcast episode to kind of ask yourself to see whether you're in a good headspace mentally and emotionally to get back into the dating scene. So I would say that resource. But other than that, I know there are some great dating coaches out there that you can Google. There's probably some really amazing books that kind of give you some guidance on whether or not you will know if you're ready to jump into the dating pool. So I don't know if that's the answer that you were looking for. Hopefully that was a little bit helpful and answered your question in some sort of a way. All right. Another question. Do you prefer breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Mm, Well, I just really like food, so probably all of them. But if I had to answer, I guess my favorite would actually be brunch, and then it would be a breakfast food at brunch. I do 
really love to go to brunch. It is one of my favorite things ever. And I love Eggs Benedict, but it has to be a good Eggs Benedict, right? It has to be the kind where the yolk is perfect. And right when you cut into it, it goes all over the place. And I have definitely had amazing Eggs Benedict and I have had really gross, disgusting Eggs Benedict. So I love a good Eggs Benedict. And when I find a restaurant that can do it right, I will go back to that restaurant over and over and over again. All right, last question that you guys send in. You talked on the podcast about being raised a Mormon and then leaving that religion. Do you practice with any religion currently? And what was it like to leave something that had been such a big part of your life? This is a big question. And so I definitely could do like, I could answer this question on its own podcast, right? So I'll just give you like the high level answer for this podcast, since I know we've been going for a little bit and I've been answering a lot and I've been talking a lot about myself, which is not something that I probably do very often. Yes, I was raised Mormon. My whole entire family is still like my immediate, my brothers and sisters, my parents, they're all still Mormon and part of that religion. And no, I do not currently practice with any other religion. I don't really find religion for me personally to be useful. I find it very constraining and keeping you in a box. And so there are things from the Mormon religion that I agree with, and there are things that I do not. And I'm not affiliated with any religion. I guess you could say I'm spiritual in my own way, but I don't, I don't have the answers of whether or not I know there's a God or what created us, or I just don't have those answers. And I think everybody really needs to answer that for themselves and I would never presume to say that one religion is better than another because, again, I don't have those answers. As far as what was it like to leave something that had been such a big part of my life, it's been a journey. It's been hard. It's been, you know, enlightening. I found out things about myself when I decided to leave that I didn't know were there, that I kind of was hiding behind because of my religion. And also it's been hard because my entire family is still a part of that. And I love them and I am really lucky. I have a family who's open and continues to love me, even though I don't believe the same things that they believe any longer. And I love them even though they do believe things that I don't believe in any longer. So it's been a journey. I'm sure it will continue to be a journey. There's probably so much more that I could say about this topic. Maybe someday I'll do a podcast on leaving a religion after a divorce or something like that. I mean, I didn't leave it after my divorce, but I know there are women who listen to this podcast who maybe struggle with their, and are having a faith crisis or an, you know, a religious crisis in some way. And so that could possibly be a podcast episode that I would do in the future. But for this podcast right now, we'll just say that some days it's hard and other days it's easy. And I could really say that about anything in life, right? <laughs> so I don't know if that answered your question, but that's just kind of where I'm going to leave that one today. All right. So that is the end of the questions. Thank you to everyone who submitted. I really appreciate you participating in this 100th episode. It's been fun to answer your questions and think about these things for myself. And again, I would love to hear your answers as an opportunity for me to get to know my listeners just a little bit better. You can DM me at Karen Nelson Coaching and answer any or all or one or 10 of the questions. I don't even know how many questions there are. I don't even know if there were 10. I didn't count, but there was probably 10, right? We'll just, we'll just guess there were about 10 and you can answer any of them that you want. Send me your questions. I would love to read through them and get to know you better. But again, I'm so excited that this is episode number 100. Continue with me on this journey, please. I love you all. I am grateful for each and every one of you. I know that you're struggling as you're going through your divorce. I know I was there. Even though I had an easy in the way that it was amicable, I definitely understand the struggle and the pain, the emotional toll that divorce takes, the breakup, how hard it is on your kids, how hard it is on yourself and getting to know yourself afterwards. I understand all of that. And I love you for showing up for yourself and doing the work to create a better life for you and get to know yourself better as you move forward in that life. With that said, thank you so much for being here and listening. And I will talk to you next week. If you like what you're learning on the podcast and you're ready to create lasting change and results in your life, then you need to be working one-on-one -on -one with Karen as your divorce coach. 
This is where we take everything you're learning in the podcast and 10 exit with implementation and weekly coaching, where you start to see change in yourself and your life immediately. To find out more about how to work exclusively with Karen, go to www.karennelsoncoaching.com. That's www.karennelsoncoaching.com. Thanks for listening. If this podcast agreed with you in any way, please take a minute to follow and give it a rating wherever you listen to podcasts. And for more details about how I can help you live an even better life than when you were married, make sure and check out the full show notes by clicking the link in the description. 